Are you ready to unleash your inner 20th century artist? Grab your splat box and some ink sprays and get ready to turn into a regular Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Every technique video is narrated live while I'm doing the technique, so you're getting a real-time view of how the whole process works. Pull out the supplies I'm using and create right along with me, pausing as you need. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. So just like Jackson Pollock, the famous 20th century artist, we are going to flick paint onto our canvas. And our canvas in this case is watercolor cardstock. And I'm using this because it's going to soak in the ink very quickly. And I've got my splat box to keep it from getting all over the place because we are going to be flinging our paint. And I think gloves are in order because this is kind of a messy technique. So I'm going to be taking my ink sprays and spraying them into the bottle cap. And really you only need like one spray. So just enough to get a little bit in the bottom, but not so much that you're gonna leave this big goopy mess here. And you're gonna flick your hand and allow the paint to flick out of the cap onto your paper, just like that. So this is gonna soak down into the cardstock. And if I have any leftover in my cap, I can continue flicking until I get it all out. There we go, that's really great. And I'm gonna let this soak down into the paper and I'm going to then go ahead and heat set it. Sometimes for the darker colors, you may want to take a paper towel and just go right over the top of it and pick it up. The dark colors especially, because when they dry, they're going to be kind of muddy. So if you want, you can pick up some excess. And as you can see, I'm going to get a much better look here because I've picked up that extra and it's not going to be dark and muddy. It's going to be this gorgeous burgundy color. So I am still going to dry this. And when I come back, we'll add another layer. All right, so this is now dry. And I'm going to go ahead and start on my second layer. And for my second layer, I'm going to do a Distress Oxide. This is worn lipstick. And again, I'm going to just spray into the cap until I get a little bit in there. And you can see, I mean, there's not... A whole lot in there but there's definitely enough that I can go ahead and flick this and again I'm going to stand back a little bit so that way I can get a little bit better motion and I'm going to flick so cool all right so again we're going to let this soak up into the paper a little bit and if I need to blot I will blot and then I'm going to dry so here we go our second layer is dry and as you can see that just looks absolutely amazing so far now this isn't something i normally do in my technique videos but because every step is exactly the same we're going to flick we're going to dab and we're going to dry i'm going to go ahead and speed this up so you can enjoy the process Here's the look after I've gone through all seven colors that I had pulled out. I could continue going. I would just start from the beginning and work through all of my paints again to get another layer. As you can see, while I was doing the dabbing and the lifting up, you were getting different layers that are compounding on top of each other. Some of them are more opaque, some are more transparent. You're getting some really, really cool looks here. So the further you go with this, the more complex the look will be. 
I love the look of this with the white coming out from the background, but it will look equally as good completely covered in color with hardly any white showing at all. One note that I do have is you definitely want to be using clean paper towels to do your dabbing, otherwise you're going to end up with that texture from the paper towel. Now this isn't a bad thing per se, but it does take away from all of the splotches that you have going on from your splatters. When you see this little bit here, it can be a little bit distracting because you don't have that firm angle and direction of all of these splatters going on. You just see these little things that are maybe a little distracting. So just something to keep in mind as you embark on your Pollock style ink splattering. Of course, one last thing to note is you're going to want to clean your caps before you put them back on your ink spray so that way you don't have a mess when you go to use them the next time. I hope you enjoyed this technique and you add it into your toolbox sometime soon. When you give it a try, share it out on Instagram and tag me at NicoleWattCreates. I always love to see what your creative mind is thinking. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. And until next time, happy crafting.